Welcome back to episode four of the compound rebuild. So I'm now finally stood on a fully operational airport runway <laughs> for F-15 fighter jets. No, it's not at all. This is um, a very bodged DIY concrete pad. Now, I asked for suggestions and feedback from you guys of what ratio to use for my mix, how to do this, how to achieve this. I always wanted to concrete this. Now we've got a roll in. It makes sense to have the hardest, most solid surface ever to facilitate any vehicle taking off the kicker, which we're going to build today. And I'm it's actually started raining in the last 20 seconds, but I'm still planning on riding that today. So this concrete slab, I read a lot of comments and some people, some of you guys are civil engineers and things which were detailing very, very specific strategies to achieve this. In hindsight, I wish I kind of went along with it because what I did was got a cement mixer, which is tiny. You can get about 10 shovel loads of aggregate sand and cement in there. It mixes together. You walk it all the way to the end, you pour it on the floor and it's like a little molehill. <laughs> of like, well, if you have a massive dinner, the next morning you can produce a pile, a similar size of that. So you can imagine how many wheelbarrows it's taken to do all of this. It's ridiculous. Four days is taken and you can see like the storyboard, the, like the process of getting really dry mixes. Then, oh no, let's make it a bit wetter. Oh, that one was way too wet, all of those 10. Really wet again, dry, wet. It's a bodge job. I think an aerial shot, it would look like a disaster. So if I had my time again, which if this doesn't last, I will. I'll do what loads of people said, which is put shutter boards down the side, kind of case a box in and just get a lorry to pump it all in. It would have saved me four days. I'd have been saying this on a Monday and not a Thursday, <laughs> which is savage, but it's done. And we didn't even get to the end. So yesterday, Ben and Joe helped and Jig. So I had some help, which was magic. So we, I'd have still been going today on my own. I didn't get to the end because the generator ran out of fuel on the last mix. And actually, having ridden down that roll in, I don't even know why I cut the back of that landing out to make space for a takeoff. The takeoff's gonna finish here, I think. This jump will be huge. So that boundary there kind of sets the precedent of how big this jump's gonna be and forces me to make it massive first go today. So we've got a very cool build lapse because all of this has happened and I'm gonna build the kicker to ride this very shortly, which is good. But firstly, everyone jumped on the bandwagon with naming the new roll in and what I found fascinating is it links back to the backyard trail series which started almost exactly a year ago today where everyone's just built this theme around mountains that's called everest because it's massive and someone came up with that cool name in episode two or one whatever it was and now everyone's jumped on the mountain theme i love it i didn't even suggest that there's a theme but all of the names were things like the summit which i like kilimanjaro another huge mountain k2 the north face um, base camp, I like base camp, so did Ben, but because we're gonna build a trail shack, an, ap an epic viewing gallery hangout area for all sorts of activities, I think we're gonna save the name base camp for that. So we're gonna go with the name Sherpa, which I like. Sherpas are the people that help people climb Everest. So the Sherpa gets us to the top of Everest. The guy who commented even gave the explanation, which I like, because <laughs> it, it does take a bit of a route to get there. It's really raining. It's going to be interesting to see if that gets slippery when it's wet. Mm. I tried to go with like a quite a rough tamp finish rather than a trowel finish, um, which my friend Justin suggested because if it was all like this, perfectly smooth troweled, like already that's getting wet, you can feel that it's slippery, which I'm not into. So that's a huge landing. It's taller than the airbag landing. But what I am going to do, and I know I asked you guys about takeoff sizes and dimensions. Firstly, today I'm going to build an identical kicker to the airbag one. It's nine foot tall, it's five foot wide, and I'm almost positive it's got a 16 foot radius. I've explained all about radiuses and maths in the last video. I've got some very interesting maths coming up later. There's a lot of maths into this build when I've finished the round. But let's build it first, look at it in situ, because as explained before, there's gonna be more than one ramp onto that landing. So I may as well build an identical one to the airbag, because if I learn a double backflip no-hander, I can then go up the, what's it called, Sherpa. <laughs> I can climb up Sherpa, <laughs> drop in and do a double flip no hander to dirt. Cause it's really, you have to take your tricks to dirt for them to count. So I'll have that perfect sphere of training facility. Doesn't make sense. But uh, no, things will, things will happen good when I've got two identical lips. Then I may as well build the insane 12 foot quarter pipe one, for example. So let's get on with it. I've been talking about this build lapse. It's gonna be a long, a juicy one. So here we go, <laughs> build laps.
massive. It's nine foot and two inches. It's got a 16 foot radius. The radius, if you saw in the build laps, is the length of that piece of string. So that forms half the width of a full circle when it goes all the way around. The bigger the radius, the more open the ramp, the tighter, the more tight the transition is. So this one is a pretty much identical match to the airbag one. I'm sure, I'm sure they're slightly different. This one's also sat on sloping down concrete. So we've propped it up on legs. And I did say I was gonna finish the ramp at the end of the concrete pad. There was no way. Look at the size of this gap. I'm gonna guinea pig this in a moment. And for a first run guinea pig of something where you've ridden down the roll in once and you've never hit the takeoff or the landing, <laughs> I think that's quite a bold move to go in that big with no real calculations or guesswork. But I'm gonna do it and I'm buzzing. I also have absolute respect for everyone in the trade. Concrete workers, scaffolders, carpenters, bricklayers, laborers, moisturizer. <laughs> my, hands are, my hands are doomed. I'm not that proud of that concrete pad, to be honest. Today, building the ramp, it's taken us hours. The more and more, I, the more you stare at it, the wonkier it gets, the bendier it gets. That'd make a good tattoo, actually, wouldn't it? What's that? The more you stare at it, the more it bends. <laughs> it does, it's actually like a, a whoop section, isn't it? <laughs> so the ramp's ready to go. We've packed it down with some sandbags. It's pretty much permanently there. It's gonna take a little bit of time to slide it around. So I'm hoping that's the right length. So I'm gonna put my pads on, push up a wet roll in, because we've had rain, drop in and I said to you guys how much speed I'm gonna have pedaling. I'm not gonna pedal, I'm gonna roll, pump, cruise, push through the jump. If that works, I'll go a bit higher, bit higher, trick it. And then when it comes to pedaling, I'll make it bigger. But that's assuming it's okay now. It's not gonna be okay now. There's no way you can eyeball it perfectly. Can you stand in the middle for size? Yeah, it's big. It's huge, isn't it? Yeah, it's massive. Oh, you know I said I was gonna talk about mats. Mats? Yeah, more mats. Oh, mats. Right, when it comes to takeoffs, Sam Reynolds called me about this a couple of weeks ago and we had a debate about it. The whole goal of this jump is to get more air time. It's not necessarily to go longer. It's not to have the longest gap ever. It's not to break any world records. I want more air time, so I've got more time to do bigger tricks and world's firsts. Most people think to get more air time, you need to make a jump longer. It's not actually true. You need to make a jump steeper so you go higher because forces work as vectors. They have a vertical vector and a horizontal vector. They are irrelevant from one another. So the only vertical force ever at play is gravity. It's always pulling you down and it's pulling you exactly down in a straight line. And because of that, there would be no difference in airtime between an 100 foot jump where you go one foot high and a one foot jump where you go one foot high because it takes the same amount of time always to go from zero foot up to one and back to zero, regardless of how far you go. If lift is involved, like an airplane, that goes out the window. But we're talking about a guy on a bike. If you want more airtime, you have to go higher. That is gonna increase your airtime. I know it sounds stupid, you'd think, of course, Matt, if you go 100 foot on a bike, you're gonna be in the air for ages. Not if you only go one foot up. You disagree with me already? That's exactly how I'm thinking. No, I'm not disagreeing with you, I'm just surprised. You would get there so fast. If you only go in one, it would be a 100 foot bunny hop, not a jump and you would be in the air. Okay, yeah. if, you, if you came past me, Ben, and I, I hope you one day do, and at the same time as me, we both bunny hop, and you're going 90 mile an hour, and you go 100 foot, and I go one foot. We both you hit the ground at the same time. We'll take off at the same time and land at the same time. Because we'll put a force in to get up to one foot, and gravity is the same for both of us, and it will decelerate us at one, and stop us at one, and we'll accelerate back to zero. That takeoff is the same steepness as that, but I am going to build an insanely steep takeoff that's going to be closer to the landing and that will give me more air time than a longer gap for sure. Now, I welcome mathematicians and physicists to disprove me, but that's <laughs> definitely my understanding of how ramps work, which has stalled me for a good couple of minutes from putting my pads on, so I'll see you at the top of the rolling. <laughs> it moves a bit. The biggest half pipe ever made. <laughs> I've got no clue if that's in the right spot. Are you nervous? Yeah. I am nervous because I haven't ridden my bike for two weeks. I've just been doing the trade. And that ramp is where we built it. it. Just happened to be where the ground seemed pretty level. And now I've hammered stakes into the ground and screwed it to them. So that's why it's there. You do make minor changes when you hit stuff, don't you? As you're going up a ramp, you think, oh, push through, boost. Um, cool. Well, wish me luck. Well, don't good luck, mate. Don't expect anything legendary. I'm going to do a straight air for sure. Okay. <laughs> Could be the best thing ever. Could be the worst. Could be a car crash. <laughs> I haven't ridden across this yet. Let's do it all in one, all in one go. Drop in, cruise the concrete. It's not gonna be, I mean, there's gonna be no surprises. That could be a surprise. That back of that landing now is like so hard. It's been whacked in with a six ton <laughs> digger and shovels. If I land in the back, I'll do that in the air. <laughs> Probably grow wings and float off up to heaven's gates. <laughs> what? 
thing. I just don't want to overshoot. Your case. <laughs> I haven't ridden my bike. Man, I, I'm, I'm, kind of I'm not criticising. I don't know how you'd even go about doing this. But you're how, thinking... I know of... how you'll go about doing it. You'll drop in brakeless and land wherever you land. I will not. I don't know whether to break down it. I've never come to my compound and doubted anything. It's, it's always <laughs> been the place I know, like the back of my hand. I could drop in almost blindfolded. I always did some of my best tricks first run, even if I hadn't been here in two months. And now I'm back at the same place, confused. It doesn't make sense. I'm at my compound. It's true. Watch this. <laughs> Still no handrail, but I'm not a lunatic. There will be one soon. It's quite slippery up here now. It's wet. So if I kill myself, just for reference, if someone wants to come and ride my compound, I'm going to just roll, not brake, not pump, hit the jump. Ready, mate? I'm just going to not brake or pump. Just go with it like I'm a dead, just a mannequin. Oh my God, perfect. Oh my God, perfect. Oh! <laughs> it could be three meters bigger, man. Really? Yeah, because I didn't pump at all. I rode down it like a turnip, just knocked out. Let me just start tricking it. It's the best jump ever. May as well flip it second go. It's been two weeks in the making. Come here, mate. <laughs> That's got so much more air time than anything ever. <gasps> It's double the air time of my old jump. I'll do a big three. I love this jump. It's so much nicer than going up that old ladder and off the drop too. This is the one I'm most nervous for. Oh. Oh. Whoa. <laughs> it does take practice to get the same amount of speed every time out of something so simple. I think I'm second guessing myself of whether to pump or not. Did you pump then? I don't know. Clearly not. Oh. There's no way I went less far than a backflip, is there? No. So I must have gone slower. Should I do it again? Yep. Try not to case. Which might mean a little pump at the bottom of Sherpa into Everest. Then what? Oh! Dude, that looks so good. That next jump will be disgustingly big. That's where we should make the kicker that almost doesn't stop until it's vertical. That, that is no sick. I'll do a flip no hander. Yeah. You get back up there so fast, ready to go again. Slightly <laughs> out of breath. There's a lot of rubbish lunches. <laughs> the reason I land and I'm probably not overwhelmed with excitement is I'm pretty kind of panicked about how big the next jump's going to have to be. Because <laughs> I'm skidding down that landing. If I hit the next jump, I'd clear the hedges into the next field. <laughs> I would. I don't know what we're going to do. I have to get the digger back. Oh. <laughs> I'm landing almost perfect every time. It does get scary thinking what's going to happen here. If the jump's here. My word, it's fast. We might have to make a really, really hellish steep jump. Unless yeah. someone could come up with a better idea. Also got a big corner there. People said about a whale tail. <gasps> But that would probably go that way. It's always the way. It's the same in lockdown. I get excited and I think, next, what's next? I'll carry on, I'm addicted. I'll do this flip my hander, yeah? Yeah. We built it perfectly. I love it. I did weirdly travel a lot this way. Did you notice? No, I didn't. Okay, it's the first time my tyre mark was way over. Mm. I think any trick I've ever done will be possible on this jump. There's enough air time. I'd be scared to do it. But that's why I've now got two identical takeoffs. One with an airbag, one with a dirt landing which is the recipe for world's first, actually. But that's not, it's not time for that yet. We've got the whole compound to do. It is a full rebuild. We've got a trail shack to build. Trails. Trails shack. And trails. And trails. Oh yeah, so much. Yeah. Maybe a while. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I'll get that digger back. Nice one. New jump, it works. So we move on to the next one. Legends. So that's a smart car. What? Yeah. <laughs> like a NASCAR. 